I'm going to share with you my discoveries when it comes to the secrets behind the high performance routine. Because when I was trying to make my first 10K online, my first 100K online, I was all over the place, right? I used to spend half an hour doing one thing, half an hour doing another thing. I would listen to videos and I would do work at the same time. And I made all of these beginner mistakes that allowed me to really spend a lot of energy doing a lot of things. And then at the end of the day, really get nothing done. And over a couple of months, I would just really go nowhere. So there's a couple of things that I discovered along this journey that I'm going to share with you in this video. So we're going to get into some of the how to stuff down here and how to remove procrastination, really optimize uh, different things when it comes to your mindset as well. But to be able to get to here, we need to understand everything on this side so that you can see how it all connects together. And then we're really going to get into, you know, how you can optimize this overall. So stick with me to the end so we can really get to this part here, which is going to give you some actionable steps on how you can actually go ahead and really optimize these things. So the first thing we want to do is understand what a routine actually is. Well, a routine is basically just a allocation of certain energy to go towards a certain activity to get the outcome that you want. That's really all that it is. We just want to be able to optimize what energy are we going to spend to get the thing that we need to get done so that we can move in the direction that we want to move. For this next part here, I really like to think of myself as an engine. So I have time and I have energy. These are the two buckets that I'm trying to manage so I can get what I need to get done, done to the highest quality. We have time, which is everybody has the same 24 hours in a day, but we also have our energy which is the energy that we put in to the work that we're actually doing in that space of time. So this is really what we're trying to optimize here. We're gonna get more into that later in this video. So the next thing we wanna look at really so we can get clarity on what we're actually optimizing for is understanding the different life pillars that we have going on at any given time. Now I like to break this into seven sections, which is mind, body, spirit, relationships, network, money, and business. So money and business are separate because you can be you know, great in business, but you also have to manage money in a different way, so it's managing your finances. Now, if you're not running a business, maybe you're in sales, you have a nine to five job, whatever that case is, you're still optimizing for money and business may be something that you're doing later on, or maybe you're something you're just thinking about doing at a later date. So don't worry about that too much right now if that's not you. Now, a true life of self mastery is really optimizing all of these different areas so that we can live a happy, fulfilled, well-rounded life and well-rounded existence here on earth. So we need to be able to look at all of these different pillars and be like, okay, well, what am I actually optimizing for? Now we can break this into two categories. What am I optimizing for in the next 60 to 90 days? And what am I optimizing for at each given period throughout the day? So over the next 60 to 90 days, this is really the big thing that we're working towards. So we're really looking at what is the outcome we're trying to achieve overall in the next maybe 12 months. And how can we break that into projects and focus on that for the next 60 to 90 days so we can really get this thing done really, really well. And within that 60 to 90 day period, we break it into daily steps so that we can use the most energy that we have at any given time to allocate towards the completion of those tasks, depending on the pillar that we're focusing on. So let's say over the next 12 months, you're trying to make your first 100K online. And then within the 60 to 90 day period, you want to hit your first 10K month. Now you see how we've segmented that down. And then from there, we're able to build from that and reflect depending on those 60 to 90 days. Now we would break that into daily tasks. So we would look at, okay, well, what's the biggest thing that I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to move me forward? If you're looking at a business or anything related to sales, that's going to be having conversations with people, which means that our highest priority task is having conversations with people people. This is not something we're going to outsource. This is something we're going to learn and master ourselves so that we can get really, really good at client acquisition. So this would be a very, very simplified example of where we're going to spend the majority of our energy. And then the rest of our energy is going to be optimized towards these other life pillars because we need to be able to take care of ourselves, which we'll talk more about in a minute, to be able to really complete this to our highest quality. Because one of the things that I made a big mistake on in the beginning was allocating all of my time towards business, but then all of the other things in my life just fell apart, which affected my business and affected my performance on a day-to-day -day basis, which really just slowed down my results overall. So of course we want to have one primary focus so whatever, whatever that big goal is for you but you also have to remember that there's other life pillars that need to be accounted for so that you can live a great life rejuvenate your energy and really maximize the performance that you have and the enjoyments that you have as well in the business or in the thing that you're doing so really the key lesson for this first section here is to manage energy and not time so the next stage is really looking at well how do we actually go ahead and do that so if we're focused on managing energy and not time then we need to look at, okay, well, how can I start to clear up my energy so that I have more energy to do the things that I need to do to the highest possible quality? There's a couple of things that we look at here to really be able to break this down. The first one here is emotions. A lot of people don't realize that 
they're kind of stuck in lower level emotions. I'm going to put a chart up on screen right now from a guy called David Hawkins, who did a lot of research based around this. And if you look at the top level emotions here, you'll see that they're much more positive. They're much more energetic. That's really where you want to get your energy to so that you can increase the quality of the work that you're putting in because you're operating from a higher energetic state. What a lot of people don't realize is that they're coming from these lower level emotions. And when they come from those lower level emotions, it affects their performance, it affects their energy levels, and it affects overall their well-being. And it causes them to come from a place of lack, come from a place of scarcity. And it really is just not an enjoyable place to be. So how we really want to clear this up is to really manage our emotions. It's a quote from one of the greatest investors in the world, Warren Buffett. He said, you can't manage your emotions, you can't manage money. Now that took me far too long to realize, but we do want to remember this in the pursuit of growing our income, growing our business, and whatever it is that the goal you're working towards, that we need to be able to manage our emotions so that we can move from these lower level emotions up to these higher level emotions. So a couple of ways that I find to be very helpful to do this is to meditate. This is really where the mastery starts to come in, okay? So if you're sitting there and you're meditating, you want to be able to understand what is the emotion that I'm feeling right now. And if you're getting started into something new and maybe you're feeling self-doubt or maybe you're feeling fear, that's not something to shy away from. These emotions are here to steer you into action. They're here to steer you into learning a lesson that you need to learn to be able to get to where you want to be. I used to see emotions as these really negative things that I used to shy away from whenever I could. And I would run away and I would avoid them. But the thing is, we can never escape them. They're always going to come back. They're always going to signal us to do something. And at the back of our minds, we know that they're there. So to be able to really master this, we want to process our emotions and allow ourselves to actually feel them. Now, sometimes as men, this can be a very difficult thing to do because society has told us that we cannot show our emotions. Now, this doesn't mean that you go off crying about the things that are happening in your life because in that case, you need to stop being a little bitch. But we also want to have tactics and strategies to be able to turn to so that we can process these emotions and take them from lower levels up to higher levels and really increase our amount of energy so that we can put that into accomplishing the things that we want to do. Okay, so that's the first one, emotions. The next one is removing distractions. So one of the big things I did in the beginning of my journey when I was trying to do all of this was I was living at home for quite a long time and I hadn't lived at home for six years before that, but I moved back to save some money, get this thing off the ground and really figure it out. But I found that there was a lot of distractions around, right? I had family there, I had a dog to take care of. There was all these things around me just taking away my time and energy. So one of my main goals in the very beginning was to move out of home and to move to a hot country where I could spend some time in the sun and also remove these distractions so I could focus all in on what I needed to do. But that really brings me down to number three and also number four as well, which is people and environment. So whether we like it or not, there's always going to be people in our lives that drain our energy. They take more than they give back. And, you know, this might seem insignificant or you might see, oh, they're a family member or, or we've been friends for a long time. But at the end of the day, if you look at how do you feel after you spend time with this person? Or how do you feel in this particular environment? And you find that your energy is drained, right? You feel negative, you feel doubtful, you feel fearful, you feel lazy. All of these are signals for you to change up your environment so that you can get to where you want to be. The way I was thinking about this in the beginning is if I really want to go ahead and change my life forever, then I'm going to need to change a lot of the things around me, right? The people around me, I'm going to have to leave some people behind. I'm going to have to change my environment. And a lot of the time in the beginning, it's about removing these people. As hard as that might be, it's going to benefit you in the long run and also benefit the relationship with them in the long run as well. Because you can go off, you can do your thing, you can crush what you're trying to crush, and you can come back and help these people afterwards, you know, if, if you're still friends with them by that time. So and really, that's the same thing for your environment as well, because your environment is really going to reflect, you know, how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, I always make sure that I move into an apartment where there's a big window, there's a big window right beside me here, and there's a lot of natural light, and you know, I have my own space, it's calm, it's cool, it's quiet, so that when I get up in the morning, I can start to make videos like this, I can start to work in peace, and I have control over my environment. And of course, it took me a while to get here. It didn't start like this. I had to work from little tiny bedrooms or Airbnbs, which weren't the nicest in the beginning, but eventually I got to the point where I was able to do this. And you know, now I'm much happier, and far more focused to really be able to optimize my energy, my focus, to really get where I want to be in life. So the other four things that you can think about, but emotions is going to be the biggest one. A lot of people ignore this, but you really want to be thinking about how can you start to process these lower level emotions. So the next thing we're looking at here is the rejuvenation of energy, okay? Because if we're looking at here, we have these buckets, right? We have a certain amount of energy to spend, but we're spending it in the wrong places. That not only means that we're not getting the things done that we need to get done, but we're actually moving in the wrong direction. Now, ideally, we want to be spending our energy on the highest priority tasks to be able to move us forward. But whether you're spending it on the right things or the wrong things, going to need to rejuvenate your energy so that you can increase the quality of the work that you're doing and really get the most out of it right so there's a couple of ways that i do this which is number one is grounding so walking on grass walking on the beach you know, i always uh, make sure that i live close to the beach so that i can very easily walk in the sand and anytime i do this 
listening to the wave, listening to the water. Maybe I throw on a podcast and I just go walking with my bare feet. This allows me to rejuvenate my energy, right? It allows me to be at peace. And when I come back, I'm always fresh. I'm always looking forward to getting back and diving into the next thing that I got to do. Okay, so that's one thing. Number two is just a walk, so a general walk. So I walk by the water, walk by the sea, walk down the street, whatever it is for you. Going on walks is going to help you free up your mind, get your body moving, and you're going to be able to rejuvenate your energy that way as well. Also, I have here focusing on other life pillars. Let's say we're talking about the mind, for example. Now, for you to sit down and meditate, for you to sit down and journal, for you to sit down and just be at peace with yourself, that's going to be focusing on your mind, focusing on calming your mind, focusing on refocusing your attention and where that's going and we just recalibrating in between the tasks that you do which means that you're focusing on another life pillar which is mind which is actually rejuvenating your energy as well okay so you can see there's kind of a common theme between all of these all right this could also be going to the gym uh you know focusing on your body in this case which is also rejuvenating energy so when you come back and you focus on your work and your business you're going to feel more fueled as long as you're focusing on removing some of these things up here as well so some of the last things then which you kind of touched on already is disconnection from devices so disconnecting from your computer not spending all day in your computer and also friends as well so this is really just looking at the people part here as well in number three so we've touched on a lot of different things there that's how we can optimize our energy increase our energy and also rejuvenate from different tasks so that we have more energy to put into things later on and now let's look at procrastination it's going to be one of the biggest things that you face when it comes to your routine because you could have the best habits the best routine but sometimes you're going to be procrastinating on these things so how can we remove this well first of all we need to understand where procrastination actually comes from so procrastination usually it comes from uncertainty okay so uncertainty as to what is the best thing to do so when we look at uncertainty we're looking at okay well, what thoughts are actually going through your mind well you're probably thinking to yourself i don't know what to do i don't know what the best thing to focus is on and the reason for this is because you don't want to actually waste energy as human beings we don't want to waste our energy or waste our time doing something we feel is just not going to benefit us okay now the reason you don't want to waste energy is because you feel like you don't have energy in the first place so i know definitely for me in the beginning it was like i don't want to waste energy doing these things and I also felt like I didn't really have that much energy to begin with, so that the things I was trying to get done, I just never felt like I was really, have, I didn't really feel like I had a lot of energy to do these things in the first place anyway. So this leads to more procrastination because you're uncertain of what to do, you don't know how to do it, or you know you just don't want to waste energy on doing different things. And from that uncertainty, it actually leads to more procrastination. And the thing is, I know definitely I was guilty of this as well, which is also something like productive procrastination, okay? Where you sit down and you watch a YouTube video, or you sit down and you go through a course, and you think that you are you know, actively learning and you're actively taking notes, which could be what you're doing and could be benefiting you in some way, shape or form. But you know at the back of your mind that you're not doing the thing you need to do and you're just productively procrastinating on something else. So this could come from uncertainty within yourself, which again is tied to these emotions over here, which is why the emotions are one of the biggest things that we need to focus on. Because when we can master our emotions, then we can remove things like self-doubt, remove things like fear, and we can take back our energy, which means that we have more certainty within ourselves because we're not feeling things like self-doubt. Hopefully that's kind of making sense so far. So when we look at this, okay, well, how can we actually bring more certainty into our lives so that we can stop procrastinating, okay? Well, so first of all, we want to look at, okay, well, what's, what's the outcome that we're actually looking for? Is that something that's inspiring to us? Are we really excited to actually achieve this thing? Does it really get you to lift your energy and get excited to work towards this thing? Or do you feel like you've taken on somebody else's goals and now you're working towards a goal that you think you should have when really at the end of the day, it doesn't really inspire you. This is a key thing to think about. The next thing then is our energy, okay? It always comes back to energy. So how can we clear these things, optimize these things so that we can go ahead and have more energy and have more certainty within ourselves, okay? Because when we remove things like self-doubt and fear and all these things that stop us from taking action, then we can go ahead and we can move with certainty within ourselves, okay? And this comes from, you know, this comes from working on your mindset. It comes from reframing a couple of the different things that probably happened in your life as well. So again, we'll get into that in other videos. But for now, we just want to think about how this actually plays a part in this as well. So the next thing then is the biggest domino, which leads me, leads me really to into the last part of this video, which we're going to get into, which is, okay, what is the main pillar that we're focusing on? And how can we eat the frog? Okay, that's, that's a frog. That's a frog, by the way. So when we know the main pillar that we're optimizing for, then everything around our performance and our routine is going to reflect this pillar. And when we're talking about eating the frog, maybe you already know this, but this is the concept of basically doing the hard thing first. The idea is based around if you have a delicious meal to eat and you have a frog to eat before it or after it, which time do you choose to eat the frog? Do you eat it before or do you eat it after? Well, ideally you would eat it before because if you were to eat it after, then you would eat your meal and then you would just be thinking about it in the back of your mind. I got to go eat this frog afterwards, which is going to ruin everything, <laughs> you know? So ideally you would eat the frog first, have your delicious meal so that your mind is peaceful. Same thing applies when it comes to doing the hard thing first. The reason that we're doing this is we're taking the action off a pedestal because the thing is when we know that there's the thing that we need to do and we spend all of our time doing everything except that thing, we now have that thing on a pedestal. We, we now have an infatuation or an obsession in the mind 
towards this thing that we just have not done. Okay, because if you go out throughout your whole day, you could have the most amazing day, you could get all this stuff done. But if there's one thing that you did not do that you know is the thing that you need to do because it was the hard thing that you just tried to avoid, that's going to be in the back of your mind no matter how much stuff you got done that day. That is going to stick with you. That's the thing you're going to remember. It's going to ruin your day. This is why we do the hardest thing first thing in the morning. And it's just the best way to do it. I found this from my experience as well, because I would wake up, I would watch videos, I would watch content, I would have all these different things, and I would feel like I'm being productive in the moment. But at the end of the day, and after a couple of weeks, a couple of months, I was making no progress, okay? So we want to be able to reduce stress, because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to optimize our energy so that we can create more. So especially when you're starting a business, or if you're in something like sales, you're going to need creativity in what you do. You're going to be producing content. You're going to be sending messages to people. You're going to be putting yourself out there. So you need to be creative. And the only way to be creative is to reduce stress and optimize your energy. So when we look at things like eating the frog and doing the hard thing first, what we're doing is we're do reducing the stress so that for the rest of the day, we've now done the hard thing. And for the rest of the day, we can now focus on being creative because everything that we do after that is a bonus. So the next thing you can do to really optimize your performance is you understand your own circadian rhythm. So your circadian rhythm is really just your body clock. So when does your body kind of wake up? When does it go to sleep? And how can we use this understanding to really get the most out of our day? And the reason we're looking at this is because of one thing, which is cortisol, okay? Because if you can start working when your cortisol is spiking, then you're going to have a natural flow of energy to be able to do the thing that you need to do. It will mean that you have more energy to put towards the hardest things that you have to do first thing in the morning. So of course, if we start to understand cortisol, we'll know that it drops later in the day as well, which means that we need to be able to do these other things to be able to get back our energy so that we can continue to work and do the things that we need to do throughout the day, okay? So the last thing then is really just designing your day. So what does your ideal day look like? This is a very important question just to think about as we finish up this video. What does your ideal day look like? Because if we think about a great life, a great life just is just made up of great days. If you really have a great day, we need to understand what is the day that I would live over and over and over again if I could. And thinking about that question really opens up your mind as to, well, how do I want to design my days and how can I work towards getting closer and closer to that? Because really, I mean, we started a business or we got into sales or we started to do these things online because we wanted to create more freedom. We wanted to live the way we want to live, not so that we could work 24 hours every single day, okay? So what does an ideal day look like for you? This comes down to really knowing yourself, it come, um, comes down to knowing your archetype. And then from there, you can start to test out some different routines based on the life pillar that you're optimizing for. How close is it to your ideal day? And what are the most important tasks that you need to get done to be able to hit your goals in the next 60, 90 days and inevitably the next 12 months? So when it comes to designing your day, I actually have a full workshop that you can go through and walk you through the process of how you can go ahead and start to design your day, design your life, so you can feel more inspired to work and use everything that we talked about in this video to really create the reality that you want in this life. So you can check that video out here. I'll see you there.